Hey, Peg Leg TV here. Last year when we remodeled our living room, I wanted to put in a wall tablet and I couldn't find a wall bracket that I liked, so I decided to make my own. So here we have a magnetic wall mount along with the ability to charge. So I'll let you guys check out the demo and then we'll jump into the build. As you can see, the tablet stays in place and doesn't move around at all. Let's go ahead and jump into the build. First thing we'll want to do is get the magnets attached to the wall plate and the metal attached to the tablet. So here you'll want to cut the face off of a single gang old work box. So we have a template and then we'll attach a blank single gang wall plate to our template. This just makes sure that our magnets stay within the parameter of the box. For our glue, we're going to use a Loctite Epoxy Plastic Bonder. This stuff works really well at bonding plastic and metal together. I just use the bottom of a soda can to mix everything up. And you can use a scrap piece of wood or a piece of cardboard as your mixer and applicator. Make sure that you mix it up extremely well. You'll want to use Neodymium or Earth Magnets. And I use three of them that are about three quarter inch in diameter by an eighth inch thick. And they are fragile. As you can see, the one magnet is broken. After you get the glue on your magnets, you'll want to use some type of a tape to hold them down. I'm just using blue painter's tape. And you'll see these magnets are very strong. It'll pull itself to the little screw that we use to hold the plate on. I'll have a list of all materials in the description below, along with links. And you'll want to make sure that you're careful with these magnets, especially when we start getting down to the last one. Uh, the magnets are pretty strong and they can be ripped right out of your hands, as you'll see with this last magnet. Once you have everything taped up, just go ahead and set it off to the side. Next, we're going to go ahead and do the tablet. And you'll need your scrap piece of metal. Now make sure you measure everything on the back of your tablet so you don't cover up your camera or speaker or anything. Uh, take the time to sand this down. I used a 120 grit and 220 grit sandpaper. Made sure that I sa uh, sanded down the edges and the corners especially to make sure there's no sharp edges. So...
You want to make sure that you get a nice even coating of the epoxy on the back of the metal and make sure you're not putting it on too thick. You don't want it squeezing out from underneath the metal when we put it on the tablet. Once you get it placed on the tablet, make sure that it has full contact all over the metal. And then wipe off any excess and go ahead and tape it down with some blue painter's tape. Again, try not to push down too hard. We don't want to squeeze out any of the epoxy. And then once you've got the tablet all taped up, just go ahead and set it off to the side. It needs to dry for 24 hours for a full bond. Now that 24 hours have passed, let's go ahead and peel the tape off and make sure the magnets and metal are staying in place. Next, being that these wall plates are really slick, we want to cut a foam pad to put on them. And I used Easy Liner Select Grip. It's a kitchen cabinet shelf liner, but it has a little bit of foam built into it. So we just want to cut a rectangle that'll fit the flat part of the wall plate and we'll put that on after we install everything. The next step is to cut or drill a hole into the side of the box. I drilled mine and then used a knife to clean up the edges. This is so we can drop the charger cord down the wall for the media port. In order for the wall plate to sit as flat as possible, we need to cut a notch or groove for the charging cord. So here I'm just lining up the wall plate on the tablet to get a rough idea of where the charger port is doesn't have to be exact, we just want it relatively close. Next, I'm going to use my soldering iron to actually cut my groove. And I'm just going to use the side of the soldering iron to melt the plastic. Just make sure that you don't go past the lip of the wall plate, otherwise it'll start to melt through the front. And then when you're done, you can use a 220 grit sandpaper and sand your soldering iron tip clean. Next, I'm using a knife to clean up all the sharp burrs that are left over. And then as you can see here, the wire fits in the groove perfectly, and it does stick out just a little bit past the plate, but it's a lot better than not notching it. The next step is to cut the hole in the wall for the single gang old work box or cut in box. Make sure you use a stud finder and make sure you're between the studs. Here I'm using a torpedo level and the single gang old work box on its side, which is the way we want to mount it to make sure that I'm keeping the box completely level and then I use a pencil to trace out everything. Make sure that you stay in between the tabs on the box when drawing and then use the sides of the box to complete the rectangular shape before cutting it out. You'll have to do this same step with the low voltage box further down the wall where closer to where your outlet will be. I didn't get that on video because I didn't need it at this time but it is very similar to what you're going to do with this box and make sure that you do the low voltage box in the same stud cavity. Here I'm using a multi-tool to cut out the line. Make sure that you stay on the line as close as you can and make sure that you take your time. You don't want to chip the plaster or drywall depending on what you're working with. And also make sure there's no plumbing or electrical right behind that area if you can too. Here I'm cutting out the lath behind my plaster so I can get the box all the way in. And there's the test fit. After you have your single gang low voltage box cut in down below, you can go ahead and get your single gang old work box secured and then drop your USB cable down the wall and then pull it out down below. If you have excess cable, go ahead and coil it up and put some twist ties or zip ties on it and stick it back in the box. I didn't shoot a video on that because mine was already installed prior to this, so I wasn't able to get a how-to video on that one. But like I said, it's very similar to mounting this box. After you have your USB cable taken care of, go ahead and start putting your wall plate on and then make sure that everything's secure. Here I'm using the double-sided tape 
I'm putting three pieces on, making sure that they all stay within the parameter of the flat part of the plate. I put one at the top, bottom, and then put a shorter piece in the middle between the two screws. And the reason for avoiding the screws is if we ever need to replace the USB cord, we don't want to have to try and get that tape off the screws. And then make sure that your tape is sticking to the plate really well. And then when you're done with that, you can grab your foam pad and stick it on there. Again, rubbing your hand over the top of it to make sure that it's fully attached. And remember, you want to make sure that your single gang old work box and your single gang low voltage box are in the same stud spacing. Here's an image of my single gang recessed low voltage cable plate that's on the back side of my tablet wall. This is what we use to charge up our tablet. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.